Blender 4.0 is currently in active development as developers are putting all the time in to make sure that this moves from alpha to beta with a couple of interesting features as 4.0 will change a few dynamics of what Blender would be like and how artists will interact with it. And today we're going to take a look at a couple of new updates and improvements and also talk about a few more things that deals with the core and compatibility of previous, present and coming versions of Blender. And with that said, let's get right into it. With Blender 4.0 the alpha open right here, there's a few changes to the UI which you would not notice right here. The very first one which you would probably notice is if you go over to file and go all the way down here, you would now see save incremental. So the save incremental now saves Blender files incrementally. This has existed in previous apps but it's pretty interesting to see that it's now available in Blender. The next thing which you might want to also take a look at is if you go over to edit, go over to preference, if you go over to the section that deals with system, you would also notice that we have something pretty interesting that deals with operating system. So you can now register this version of Blender to open all Blender files. So this opens Blender files with this particular version and you can choose to unregister it if you're working with other versions of Blender. This feature is also available in 3.6, but that actually deals with this, that if you go over to the preference, you go over to system, that this says make default. But right now it is quite interesting to see that you can actually register this version and unregister it. And while we're still within the Blender preference, if you go over to the file part, you would notice that your text editor now has the program and also the argument. This was something that wasn't available in previous versions of Blender. And what this means is you can now log in a program that you can use to edit your Python script. And for those who like to play with the experimental features, if you go over to the interface section, you can now turn on developer extra. And from here, you can play with all of the features that actually comes with this. A snapping now looks even better with 4.0. So for snapping, right now you would notice that snapping width has been moved to the beginning of the popover, which is something you find right here. Snapping width, align rotation, and target selection are no longer hidden as you go through different types of snapping that exist. The project individual element has been replaced with the face projection option, and the face nearest has been moved to stick closer with the face project option. And when you're working with nodes within the composition section, instead of using the node preview node, you can now preview your nodes right here. So you can see that we have our preview node right here as there is now an overlay that displays above the node. This reminds me of an add-on which you can get on Blender Market. But then if you like to turn this off, you can definitely do that by going over to the overlay section and you can turn off preview on or off. There's also a couple of updates coming to the file browser. At this point, if you're trying to load in a transparent image, there's a checkerboard background that applies to that image that proves to the user that this image is actually transparent. As much as you can also import SVG images with 4.0, you can now preview the thumbnails of SVG images before you import them. Additionally, file and asset browser now shows a weight icon while previews are loading. Something which is also pretty interesting to see is the option panel which has been accessed within the object mode and edit mesh mode has now been reorganized. Unlike what you have with 3.6 where the live wrap lives up here, this has been reorganized in such a way where the UV live wrap lives separately and every other thing that has to do with the transforming of the mesh itself lives in a category. And if you're working with multiple objects, the tree line UI draws a hierarchy line to visually communicate to the user the nesting levels in relation to objects that lives within the outliner. And in the same vein, the side by scroll bar no longer overlap category tabs when zooming and resizing the toolbar no longer breaks snapping when dragging beyond the maximum available size. And for geometry nodes, there's a couple of new things that we now have. So if you go over to your geometry and click on new, we now have something that would allow you not repeat the same actions over and over. Instead, the brand new repeat node handles that for you. Say for example, if you like to translate an object over time, say we would like this to translate five, let's go ahead and type in five right there. And we'd like this to also happen afterwards let's say we'll also want it to translate five more times instead of doing this or you know doing something more complicated than that you can use the repeat zone to get this to work so how the repeat zone works is very easy if you click and drag right here and type in the word repeat you wouldn't find it so how you find it is by hitting shift and tapping a on your keyboard go over to utilities and you notice that we have repeat zone so whatever you put within this zone actually repeats if you like an object to keep rotating this object will continue rotating depending on the iterations that you want it to. The same thing also applies if you like an object to actually move from one point to another, you can still do the same thing. So we're training that transform that we did earlier and we're going to plug this right in here. 
I'm also going to go ahead and type in the word five. And if I increase the iteration, you see that happens. The repeat node is not tied to the timeline. So if you press the playback button, nothing happens. However, if you would like to animate this, you can. So we can set this to zero and we can right click and add a keyframe and we can go over to say maybe 70 and we can also proceed to make this about 10. So once we have that, right click, add a keyframe, move all the way back, bounce this backwards. And if you press the playback button, you can see this move. And for motion graphic users and probably simulation artists that are thinking about replicating or using this to create even multiple instances of the same object, you can also do the same thing with this. So once you drag out, hit the geometry join button, you can also grab from the repeat geometry and plug it into the join. So once you plug that in, you can connect this right here. And what this will do is pretty interesting that to every iteration, it makes a copy. So if you're thinking about making cloners, stuff like that, yes, you can. So you can use this to make cloners and you can also spin this around depending on what you want. So if you're into motion graphics or maybe simulation and you're thinking about using this to create some very interesting stuff, you can now use it to your advantage and make some stuff work out for you. One thing which I would say though, is as much as you like working with this, also be quite wary about the fact that this can easily crash Blender. This is still the very early test of this particular tool. And if you're playing with it, I would suggest that you don't push your luck too much, else this will crash because I did get a couple of crash over time. So just keep this one in mind. Another interesting update that is now here deals with volumes. You now have a more accurate volume creation once you convert your mesh to volume or once you're using the volume node to create some objects which you eventually convert to meshes. So with what we have here, if we choose to create this and convert this to volume, you can see what we have looking very similar to what we just saw with the mesh itself. And if we proceed to convert that volume back to mesh, you'd also notice that we have a more similar looking object except with a couple of bevels here and there. If you compare this with what we get with Blender 3.6, you can tell that we have exactly the same thing, except for the fact that some parts are a bit bulkier. This part deals with the exterior. This is where some very interesting observation comes in. First off, the volume conversion is a bit faster now. And you would also notice that for the mesh to volume node, we no longer have the fill volume in 4.0. Additionally, the exterior bandwidth is also gone and the exterior bandwidth is what is actually making 3.6 not look like what you have with 4.0 because if we go ahead and take this down, you now see what we have. So if you're into working with volumes, this might definitely come in pretty handy for you. And while we talk about things that will come in handy, there is a very nice, small and interesting implementation that is now available. If you hold on shift and control on your keyboard and click on any node, you can preview the node. So at this point, we're just simply previewing our initial object. And then we went ahead to convert this to curve and then added a second curve and then made a simple object like that, converted this to volume, converted the volume to mesh, all of that. This is also applicable across operations. So at this point, if you press the playback, you would notice that you can preview the animation within your viewport as far as this node gets connected to them. Once more, for you to actually get this node working, you need to hold on control and shift on your keyboard and click. And before we talk about other subsequent parts of Blender that is having a couple of updates, let's talk about the Python API. As there's a couple of breaking changes, and these changes exist within the asset system, where the asset library reference parameter of the bpy.types.assethandle.get full library part was removed. And we also see that within the Windows Manager, the operator the b1 property no longer defaults to type. In terms of meshes, there is a few changes that we have. As Blender 3.6 can read files from 4.0, but earlier versions cannot. Blender 3.6 also can be used to save files from 4.0 in a format which will be compatible with previous versions of Blender. And this brings us to compatibility, where mesh changes from previous versions are now included in the Blender file format. And as we all know, 3.6 is an LTS release, as 4.0 and 3.6 will be having a good handshake with standard versions which will be coming up from 4.0 and above, but previous versions like 3.5 will not be able to open files for 4.0, neither will any of the previous versions except 3.6. Face maps have been removed with their values converted automatically to an integer attribute. The bevel weights have been moved to generic attributes with the names bevel weight vertices and bevel weight edges. This alongside and a couple of other updates are making their way to the breaking changes of the Python API. 
And for animation and rigging, there's a few updates that deals with the braking and backward incompatibility changes. One of them is 1 to 9 hotkeys for switching collection visibility have been moved from the pose mode. And for the graph editor, there's a beautiful butterworth smooth filter which allows you to smooth peaks of your animation curves. There's also an improved drawing of locked F curves and there's a few updates that deals with the LNA and also the rigging. And for cycles, we do have a few updates that we've actually talked about before and one of them deals with light linking. Now for light linking, we've already made a couple of videos about this, talked about how you can work with it and working with light linking is super easy and super cool. With light selected, you can go to the object properties, go all the way down to where you have the shading and you can select the light linking. Now within the light linking, you can choose to add in as many objects that you like to link to this light from the outliner and this can actually work for every other kind of light that you have. Furthermore, you can can actually do this within your viewport with a linked data operator. This is now super possible as all you need to do is hit Ctrl and L on the keyboard with the object selected and you can link the lights to the object that will be receiving the light. And in the same vein, the Veronite Texture node now has support for fracture noise as this now comes with three different inputs that includes detail which controls the number of layer to compute, roughness which controls how much influence a higher layer has on the final output and lacunarity which controls the factor by which each successive layer is scaled with. And like we mentioned in previous video, the glossy and anisotropic BSDF are now being merged into a single glossy BSDF with anisotropic control. The multi-scattering GGX implementation was replaced by an approximation based on the practical multiple scattering compensation for micro facet models. We're also getting updates to the open shader language and also the light source. And so far so good, for Grease Pencil, there's currently no updates to Grease Pencil. As when you go over to the release note, you would notice that right here, we don't have any updates for the Grease Pencil currently. And this is for the fact that this is currently in its development, but there is actually a blog that talks about some of the big steps and new features that we will be seeing probably in 4.0. And this includes the layer group, the rework timeline, and also some API changes, which we'll begin to see some of them come in. And for EV and the viewport, there's a few more nodes that users would actually want to work with, which includes the movie distortion, the sunbeam, key, classic Kuwahara, and the composition now supports the node preview, which we also talked about earlier. So this is it for those who like to come through and read up on this, but probably you like to catch up with all of the new details that are now available. Then links to this is going to be in the description. So do well to check it out. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you like something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.